Are you trying to become Biff from Back to the Future? Is that your goal? No, but looking at my uh, my bodily features, I could see it. And that's a compliment to me. Okay, if you go get a haircut, when you go get a haircut or try to dig, do you bring a picture of like a celebrity or something and say, I want to look like this? Once, when I was a teenager. Who was it? Who'd you bring? This is embarrassing as all hell, actually. Okay. Do I, I, do I have to say? I already said it, didn't I? Yeah. No, uh uh. You just said it was embarrassing. You didn't say who it was. Who did you want to look like? I... <laughs> just I want there's a actor from the late eight now well, he's still an actor, but he was big in the late nineties when we were impressionable teenagers. The name was Devin Sawa. Okay. And uh he was the guy he he played Casper in the movie Casper. Oh. And you wanted to have a haircut like him, huh? He had these, I don't even know what you'd call them now, these bangs that, like, you could mold, you know, you could, like, curl them in the front. Okay. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Hey, man, if that's what you wanted. Well, I got them, except they didn't look good on me, so. Okay, look, we all have, I don't know if I've ever really had, like, no, I had a butt cut when I was a freshman in high school, and looking back on it, that was pretty terrible. What's like a, that was like, oh, that wasn't that wasn't a good look for me. What's a butt cut? I'm not even familiar with that. You go is. straight down the middle. It's like over to the sides. Oh, so just a part, uh, but a butt. Yeah, cut. Yeah, but a butt I, cut. <laughs> that's funny. I I would make an argument that the bowl cut and the butt cut are the two funniest types of haircuts. Well, mullet too. Those are the three funniest haircuts. I'm not entirely sure where that picked up steam and how that became an actual style either. No, it never should have been. Okay, are you ready to get started? I thought we were already I thought we were already going. I thought oh, we were already kind of a little bit, but not really. Uh okay. Do you prefer cubed ice or crushed ice? Uh I mean I'm not gonna make this easy on you. I, I prefer different kinds of ice for different kinds of things. Okay, okay, go on. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, it, it, if I'm getting crushed ice, it'll be with, like, a fountain pop. Uh, but if I'm having, like, a gin and tonic, I like the bigger cubes of ice. I think that that's actually correct. I think that's exactly the way to do it. I'm not getting crushed ice unless I'm getting a 20-ounce fountain drink or bigger. Otherwise, it's cubed all the way. But I would say I like crushed ice better overall. I, I, I almost prefer, like, the pellets, like, the crushed ice where they're pellets. You know, where, uh, like, if you go to, like, a like an ice cream shop and you get a slushy, and there's, like, the big pellets, like, those type of uh, of, of ice cubes are, ama- are, are just awesome. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, we are not alone. 57% of the audience per- prefers cubed ice. 43% prefers crushed ice. So it's close, man. It's close. You, you are not alone. It's always good not to be alone. I always want at least one other person to be familiar with whatever circumstance I'm generally going through. There was a point in my life where I, I wanted to be the best or, or have a world record of something. It could have been anything. I just wanted to be the one person with something. But as I get older in life, I don't really care about that anymore. You just wanted a world record for something? I mean, what? How, yeah. like, how far did you go with this? Did you put any initiative into it, or was it just a wish that a wish and a hope? Like someday, I'm just I mean, going to stumble into this. I mean, like, I guess I'd have to identify a talent or something that I could do well enough, better than anyone else in the world. But I don't think there is something that I can do better than anyone else in the world. The only thing that I would say that I like, I would put myself up against anybody else is dealing with customer service. Oh, I think that's one of the reasons my wife married me, because she heard me talk to customer service. I'm great. You ever need customer service? Have me call for you. I'm fantastic at it. I mean, can you can you can you give us a run through? Like, are you are you intimidating? Are you accommodating? Like, how, how do you do it? Now, why are you so good at it? Because I just I'm good at painting people into corners and then using logic. For example, like they say, well, that's not our policy. Well, it's not a policy handed down by God himself. 
you can change it if you want to. You just don't want to. And then you use silence. You just stop talking. Silence is the greatest negotiator I think that you'll ever find. Just don't talk and people will fill that silence and do what you want. Okay. All right. And and how many uh have you ever had a uh, a call where you have actually not been successful? No. Wow. I have okay. never spoken to customer service and not gotten what I wanted. <laughs> wow. You may be the only person that I know of that has a an immaculate record when it comes to customer service. I'm batting I mean, 100 or 1,000 or whatever it is. I mean, you've never hung up? You've never gotten angry and have nope. hung up? Nothing? No. Nope. No. I come prepared. <laughs> I come with facts. I come with the policy. <laughs> I got into it the other day with a bike company. They didn't want to refund the bike. And I said, listen, I understand that you've done these tests before, but the frame bent on this one. Did you test this specific bike? So you didn't test this specific bike. So you don't actually know if this bike is many, is faulty or not. And they refunded all the money, and I kept the bike. See, that I, I think that's where a lot of people get, you know, when they get to that level, they just get angry and aggressive. Like, I, I mean, that's how I would get sometimes is, you know, you know the person you're talking to doesn't really know usually the product. But I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy, I'm happy that you keep a level head. And you get what you want. It's my, I would honestly argue, it's probably my one true talent. Anyway, uh, yeah. moving on. You ready for let's shout outs? Go. Yeah, let's do some shout outs here. Uh, as I brought up Devin Sawa. Uh, anyways, uh, all right. I've RJ, never even heard of that actor before. Never I, even heard of him. For those of you who might be uh, wondering who that still is, uh, he was the main guy out of the Final Destination series as well the main actor in uh, most of those also an idle hands back in the day but uh anyways all right you uh, really had you had a full man crush then uh all right uh rj baldinelli dan fight star chris welch daniel galanea liam kelly keegan michael lazardo velarde sam woodward alex berg tommy foley Jonathan Madison, Ron Haro, and Matthew McCafferty. You get the. I, I know. I, I feel like we're kicking off a new season of the podcast with this episode. I don't know why. I okay. Just feel like, All right. I feel just like it's throw fresh, it out there. You know. I mean, I was thinking. I was thinking before I logged on here to to do this with you that we started this podcast in 2018 when Donald Trump was president. Went through the Biden era, which we're still in, and now, God willing, we'll be doing this uh, well into Donald Trump's, you know, uh, second presidency. Uh, it, it's just insane, and I say that to say that we've been around a while doing this thing. Yeah, so. that's all I have to say is yeah. Yeah, it's it's man, it's 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 wild. So it's yeah, you you wouldn't think it's been that that long, right? I do think that that's the weird thing about history. Life just goes on. And whatever circumstance you think that you're in, if this is unprecedented and all these kind of stuff, it's really not. Like, everybody's been through it. I just think life just keeps moving. You just keep moving. History is just, uh, it just repeats itself, right? There's, no matter what you believe in politics, this has happened before. Life has happened before. Volcanoes, just because it's 50 degrees in Michigan... On November 11th, it's happened before. You know, like, history just repeats itself. It just goes around. Uh, all right. Have some, I don't know, some weird-ass things to, to talk about that, you know. Okay, uh, for, okay. okay. For, first question is, uh, do you believe when you look up at the sky, and let's say you see something shooting across the sky that you can't explain. Okay. What's the first thing you like say or with somebody too? What what would be the first thing you say to that person? Like, hey, that's an alien, or it's a shooting star. Where does your mind go right away? Like the first thing you think of when you see something in the sky that you can't explain. Oh, a shooting star. Well, according to a poll done by an independent research company, uh, apparently over eighty percent of the people they polled out of the ten thousand uh, immediately think it's some kind of alien. Yeah, I mean, that's not, 
That's insane to me. That's that's a lot higher than I would have thought. Like 80% of people think if they see something in the sky, it's an alien. Yeah, it's nuts. I don't it's... know about where they get all this information from polls. Not to go back <laughs> into the election necessarily, but like who are these people? Have you? I've never been polled for a single thing. Nobody has ever asked my opinion about a survey in any way. Have you? Um, not before this election, but I can, you know, once again, not to get into politics, you know, whatever side you're on, I think we can all agree that the amount of, and I live in a swing state, Michigan. Oh yeah. You got hit. Um, I mean, every single hour you were getting a different text. Uh, let's see the RIP of the, of the week, because apparently a famous person now is dying every week, if not every other day, uh, goes out to Tony Todd. Just a beloved actor, um, uh, probably most notable for playing the. You have I've no never idea. heard of him. Jesus, I've never Christ. heard of him. Candyman, the horror franchise, Candyman. Oh, that's I, yeah. I don't watch that kind of stuff. So that, like, yeah, no, I don't want anything to do with that scary movies, man. Well, Especially well, like a scary, scary movie. New, well, R.I.P. Dead. Dead at sixty nine. Um, I, I, what under what that, age would you? What age would you go? Like, oh, that person was young. Now, I mean, like, if they just try. Well, who was uh, who was the kid? The kid who was the guy that just passed away from One Direction? Like, he was in his mid thirties. Oh, he was in his thirties. That's yeah. really young to yeah, me. Yeah, that that was pretty. And that's still. Did, do you know you you probably don't know like the circumstances like did he really just fall off his balcony was he no I something? think that, I think that there was drugs involved in some capacity yeah uh, that's not uh yeah well that's okay if all... somebody's if somebody's in their sixties are you like are they that's young no I mean no not really I mean I, I'd probably say you know at thirties and forties I'm like dang that's really young and then fifties sixties seventies eighties by then, I feel like you've had a pretty good life, you know, or, or you've lived a, a decent amount of years to have had a good life. I would actually say anything under 75, I'm a little surprised and think like, oh, they went early. Wow. 75. Yeah. Okay. 75, I think. I, <laughs> I, mean, I think they went young if it's anything under 75. Well, I mean, <laughs> you look at some of these uh, celebrities that are still kicking. Clint Eastwood, 90-something. That's insane. Uh, yeah. yes. Making a movie too at ninety four. Well, you gotta do something. Like, keep <laughs> living your life. Uh, let's see. Do you care about the 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 apparently the biggest movie of the year coming out this week or next week? Wicked. No. I haven't seen a movie that I've honestly been interested in seeing since Dune, and that okay. might be the only one. Since Avengers Infinity War. I can't, there, I mean, I can't think of hardly any movies that have gotten me interested enough that I've been like, yeah, I can't wait to see that or wait for that to come out. Dune and um, Avengers Infinity War, and I don't think that there's any other movies I can think of that I've been like, I can't wait to see that movie. I think that, uh, I, I, I agree with you. I, I feel like, it's just weird. Like I used to be in the movies and I got into TV shows during the pandemic. Now I'm just kind of everything. They come at you so fast. Now there's so many of them that it's just hard to keep up on anything. So I, I know I, I don't get excited about any really. Yeah. And they're all slightly the same. Like they're all slightly the same movie, right? It's like this time he's a mechanic. <laughs> now he's an electrician. It's... <laughs> This it's time good. he's a plumber. Like it's they're all kind of the same. So, so basically, what you're saying is it's like the hallmark, but it's of all movies. Is what you're saying? Yeah, it's all the same movie. We're all watching the same movie at this point. Well, let's let's end on a, on a, on a on a uh, fantastic note here. Okay. Um, okay. I saw one of the most frightening things I've ever seen happen on an athletic field, uh, and I didn't see it in person. I saw the replay, but. Uh, the Canadian Football League, a quarterback, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Chad Kelly, broke his leg, stands up on it, realizes it's broken, or I don't really know why he stood up, to be honest with you, but he stands up, realizes it's broken, falls to the ground, and you can see him try to, 
like basically hold his legs straight oh, so it doesn't God. fall. And nobody. Now I, I saw the clip. I didn't see the entire clip, like until trainers got out there. But not one person on the field, not even one of his teammates, are like, "Hey, dude, um, should I like maybe just hold your ankle or something? Should I like hold this together for like, you?" <laughs> but it's just you know, it's it. If you haven't seen the video, it's heartbreaking and terrible. He's gonna be okay. Well, I mean, he broke his leg. I don't know how great he's gonna be, but was it um, sticking out of the skin? No, it, I mean, it didn't look like it, but it's it's definitely, I mean, he definitely probably broke his tibia fibula because this is flopping in the wind, and he's, like, holding his own leg together oh trying to God. wait for the trainers to come, and I'm just sitting there watching this clip thinking, like, you can hear his teammates, like, like oh, no, like, they're yelling. <laughs> like, uh... It just made me think, like, that just is terrible. Somebody help the guy. Come on, Canada. What are we doing? Canada is such a hospitable place, too. You'd think they would be have better manners, but I guess not. I don't really ever want to see people's legs get hurt. I can't watch that. I can watch an arm break, okay, but legs, not at all. Can't watch it. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I can't really watch. I, I don't want to see anything break. I mean, legs are obviously the most visual because they're, like, the biggest usually, but ugh, just... Anyways. It's always gruesome looking. It's always like, oh, that shouldn't bend that way. Yeah. Arms so. or shoulders, it doesn't really look that bad, even in slow motion. But like legs, that looks always looks so terrifying. Like, oh god, that looks like it really, really, really hurt. All right, last last question here. This is a holiday related question, but uh, Christmas lights and Christmas tree, if they are up before Thanksgiving, should they be? Yes. I've got no problem. I think that there is a movement that is happening in decorations right now. I think that people are putting up <laughs> decorations earlier and earlier, and I'm completely okay with it. If I could have gotten away with it, I would have put my Christmas lights up November 1st. Wow. Okay, I mean... No problem with it whatsoever. So I, I'm going to say this, and I stand by this, is that I probably would have been pretty critical of that five years ago. But you know what? I'm fine with it now. You want to put them up in August? Put them up in August. Like, I don't care. If it makes you happy, probably would make me happy walking by your house to see, you know, your uh, your stuff out there. I'm Now, Christmas tree, Christmas tree needs to be after Thanksgiving, but decorations I'm okay with before. I'll agree with you that Christmas tree needs to wait until after Thanksgiving, but I could go Christmas lights as early as the first of no day in November. Absolutely. And if you don't do Halloween decorations and you want to skip straight to Christmas lights, if somebody threw their Christmas lights up in October, I wouldn't have that much of a problem with it. Or you could be like my wife and just buy lights for our big pine tree out front that just change colors so we never have to take them down. And we can have Fourth of July lights. We can have Halloween lights. We can have Thanksgiving colors, Christmas colors. Is that just because she knew that you weren't going to take them down in an orderly fashion and we're going to complain about it? And so she just said, I'm going to put these up there and you're just going to have to deal with it. Pretty, pretty much. That's, that's, okay. yeah, that's the real story it. there. Laziness won't get you anywhere, John. Let's move on, please. Uh, okay. You ready for our top five? I am. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm ready to get roasted, but yes, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, so our top five is top five holiday movies. And this can be either Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's themed. All the holidays basically moving forward. What's your number five? So two things before I start this list. One, this is just my personal preference list. So Okay, I, so I that means go, it's going to be a garbage list. Probably. I didn't go based upon any lists, any top ten lists. Secondly, it was really hard for me to find holiday movies that I would put on a top five list that aren't Christmas related. So get ready. It's going to be a heavy list of uh, Christmas related movies for me. There's not as many Thanksgiving or New Year's Eve movies as there is Christmas. Yeah, by, but by so. far. Uh, so in saying that, uh, my number five, and this is more of a because it's just there in my face and it's been there, uh, but that's a Christmas story. I have that a little bit higher on the list, but I understand what you're going for. It's, it's 
I mean, more listen, tradition. Exactly. And uh, they still have the 24 hours on TBS. And, you know, anyone who grew up blue, cla- blue collar in America for, in the 1990s, they looked, you know, you looked forward to that 24 hours of a Christmas story. So that's, you know, that's why it's on my, my top five. Not, not the greatest movie by any means, but it's tradition. Yeah. Yeah. It's just something that you did. I remember the memory of the movie more than I remember the movie. Like sitting and watching it, those kind of things. My number five is Klaus. A recent addition, but that's a really good Christmas movie. That should be rocketing up the ranks. The, like the one with Vince Vaughn? No. No. Okay. It's animated. Okay, I, I'm unaware of it then, I guess. Oh, it's a really good Christmas movie. It's it's. I could see it becoming a top ten overall movie for a lot of people. When I mean, when did it come out? Because if if I'm not, I don't oh. have any particulars about it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I don't know who's in it. I don't know the names of the people in it. I don't know any of the characters. I just know I like the movie. All right. I mean, listen. That's that's it's your list, man. You you do you. Do your research. I I've never seen it. Um, no, do your research, and then you would have. My number four. Uh, once again, a tradition. Um, I, I don't know how else to put it, but a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. My number four. That movie, I feel like, grows on you as you get older, because you can identify with the different generations represented within it. Like at first, you're the kid. Then you're Clark Griswold. Then you're the grandparents, and you can kind of resonate how each person feels in that movie. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I think you and I are both in the Clark Griswold stage of our life, and that is a hundred percent accurate. Everything that he feels in that movie is one hundred percent real. Yeah, it's weird how watching it now, you're like, oh my gosh. I'm turning into Clark Griswold. <laughs> except except maybe for kidnapping, you know, your boss at the end. I don't know well, if I yeah, would I'm actually not gonna do that part. But the decorations, yeah. like I got on my wife, chastised her about our lack of Halloween decorations compared to the neighbors. Like this wasn't acceptable. It's the only time I've ever had to have like a sit down conversation <laughs> with my wife about her wifing. <laughs> what wifing? Uh oh. How to how wifing. Did, uh, how did that go? It was taken well. Okay. They were valid critiques. They were valid criticisms, so it went over very well. All right. What's your number if, four? You've Got Mail. I would put You've Got Mail higher on the holiday list if it was more specific to a holiday. But okay. You've Got Mail is fantastic holiday movie. Fantastic. Okay. Thanksgiving, Christmas. New Year's, they go through all of it. Oh, I mean, okay, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think, that one doesn't stand out to me, but it's, I'm I'm happy for you. You're going to like my number three. It's a, it's a twofer, Uh, both Thanksgiving-esque movies, but I have Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and Dutch as my number, or as my dual number three. I don't know what Dutch is. So Dutch is, uh, I don't know, late 90s, early, no, early 90s, late 80s, starts Ed O'Neill. And essentially, Ed O'Neill is picking up his girlfriend's, like, uh, st- uh, son from boarding school. And they have to drive across the country uh, to get to Thanksgiving. And it's Ed O'Neill, like, married with children. Ed O'Neill, he's hilarious. Mm. And it's, 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 just, it's just a fun movie to, to watch. And... Uh, Obviously, you have to kind of like Ed O'Neill's humor, but uh, he's great. So, My number three is A Christmas Story. Talked okay. about it already. I put it there solely based off tradition. I don't personally think it's that great of a movie. No, but it's, I mean, it's definitely a tradition. I'm glad you kind of re-brought it up because I wanted to say that I've actually been to the house. And you can rent the house out as an Airbnb. And I think we should do that sometime. Is that the movie with the lamp, though, right? It's got the lamp. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. How much does it cost? I'm not paying more than like $100. No, it's more it's than $100. Like four, yeah, it's like four or 500 bucks, I think. Oh, no, I'm not doing that then. I'll walk past it. 
Um, all right, so this is probably the only controversial one I have on my list. And I think it's because it doesn't get the respect it deserves. Uh, but my number two is the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Oh, really? Once again, personal really? list. Really? It's uh tradi- you know, it's a tradition type movie. It's it's just it's just a good hearted movie about Santa. Like I don't know how else but Tim Allen's great, the great cast. It's just hmm. it's, it's it's really good. I don't think I've ever seen that. My number two is Muppet Christmas Carol. Uh You got oh, you got a problem with the Muppets. No, no, I mean I don't have a problem with the Muppets. I just, it's fine. I don't know if it. I don't know if it'd be number two. It's better than Dutch. I think the world would agree with that. Yeah, I mean I don't. I don't disagree with you on that. But you know, once again, it's personal preference. You can have it wherever you want on the list. Yeah. Okay. What's your number one? So surprisingly. Uh, to everyone who knows me, listens, or maybe has followed this podcast for the last few years, uh, Die Hard is not on my top five list. Not. It is not. I, I put th- it, thought for sure you were going to put Die Hard as your number one. I put it on the honorable mention. Maybe a couple years ago, if you know, I think we did this list a few years back. I put it on there, but uh, no, uh, I stayed with a, a pretty conservative pick, and uh, my number one is It's a Wonderful Life. Such a boring movie. Such a boring movie. But it's, I, I, th- I think not even the, in color. The, they, they do have one in color, but regardless, oh, they do. I didn't know that. Uh, I think the theme with my list is tradition, and I think the older I get, the more tradition matters. And it's a wonderful life. Is it has a? It's a, it just a, has a great message. Like I don't know what else to say about the movie other than it's fantastic. I can understand that. It's definitely something about getting older and becoming a parent that, like, tradition starts to suddenly mean a lot. That, yeah. Like, oh, this is what we do. This is the tradition that we go through. Yeah, and, I mean, it has one of the best, one of my one of my favorite actors of all time in it, James Stewart. My number one is not just the greatest holiday movie. I think it is really one of the greatest movies ever made. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I might mean, be one of the greatest comedies ever made, and it has an emotional message that keeps you watching that movie again and again. I watch it every Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I mean, I, obviously, I put it on my list. I, I, I love the movie. I, I, I would say I don't, I don't think it's one of the greatest ever. Actually, I think it's hard to really discern that from a lot of comedies uh, of that time. Uh, that were just like that, just just not a Thanksgiving, you know, holiday theme. I mean, I think that's a, a symptom of John Candy that he is consistently underrated in his movies. He's underrated by the critics because he's not a critic, darling. All the snobs don't like him, but John Candy's who doesn't? And the popular people, the people who doesn't like John Candy. <laughs> oh my God! I was just about to sound real dumb there for a second. I was Did you gonna forget say, who John Candy was? No, I was going to say, you know, one of the more versatile actors of his time because he did cool runnings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, was he ever in any dramatic movies? He was always in comedies. No, he was always in, in com- I mean, that I know of. I mean, and, and they, they were good comedies, right? I mean, The Great Outdoors, Uncle Buck. Oh, yeah. Obviously, uh, yeah. Playing Trains. He did that, the... um. God, he was in Home Alone. He was. Yeah, there it's uh, there there his band gives uh. Kevin's oh, that's mom. right, the polka band. Yeah. Um, Spaceballs. Yeah. yeah, he's that's an actor that I would say that I miss. Well, you have anything in your honorable mention? And it all comes back around because uh, he he was the co-owner of the Toronto Argonauts, which is the Canadian football team. Uh, of the quarterback I was talking about earlier that shredded his leg. So it all comes kind of full circle. Uh, let's see. Honorable mention. Die Hard, Home Alone, Frosty, uh, Rudolph, you know, all of those classic cartoony type movies. Uh, or movies. Um, uh, Gremlins. Love Gremlins. That was hard to keep off the list. Yeah, um, that's up there. That's a good movie. And then uh, tra- <laughs> 
Trading Places, which is another. Yeah, know, that's a good uh, one. Uh, Eddie Eddie Murphy's hilarious in that. Dan Aykroyd's. I I, I feel I, I think I feel about Dan Aykroyd the feel the way that you feel about John Candy. Like I love Dan Aykroyd, and I think he is so underrated, um, and will never truly get the credit he deserves uh, in Hollywood. It's a Canadian thing. And then uh, I just I. I, I have a few more, but I'll end with Scrooged, the Bill Murray version. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's pretty good. And then, uh, there's some Lego movies that I like. I think they were related to like Star Wars, like Lego Star Wars, something with Christmas. I don't remember what the names are. Uh, the only one that I had on there that you didn't was Soul Food. I like that movie and The Best Man Holiday. I like both of those movies. Thinking on it, uh, it's. I mean, has there been a good Christmas or or not or holiday movie made in the last decade? Klaus. Oh. That would be the only one that I could say that you could make an argument that Klaus is probably the only one that's been good in the last decade. I mean, Any of those like Bad Santa, there's a difference between entertaining and I think good. What's the one? Oh my god! What's the one where Ryan Reynolds is like he's really fat in the beginning and then he loses all the weight? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, yeah, I don't remember it either. But any of those like romantic comedies, like I don't really have any interest in them. They're all the same movie. I'm gonna bring up one more that's on my honorable mention because you didn't bring it up. But Jingle All the Way with Arnold is also a good tradition movie. I I I hope that. I mean, we're fish. We're in it, man. We are in the holiday season, so. Right after Halloween, my level of effort in all things decreases by 5% a week. Maybe 10 and then probably 10% after Christmas. I'm putting in 10% less effort every single week until the new year. Well, I was talking to my wife, and for those of you that don't know, Nick, like, he's an outdoorsy kind of guy. And I'm gonna, I might get on skis for the first time ever. This <laughs> because why? My calf still isn't fully healed, so why not just break my pelvis? Oh my god! Why are you gonna? What are you gonna do? Don't take a lesson. Just go out there, man yeah. it up. Yeah, I, I have some friends that we're talking about just going out, and you know, they they'd put me on the kitty hill or something, the beginner hill. So, but all oh right, we'll yeah, see. well you t- just make sure they film it, dude. <laughs> you you kidding? Tore... You're gonna be there with me. Where are you guys going? I, I can't disclose that. I don't want the hordes of people showing oh, up. Oh, a but... hill, like a hill in Michigan? Yeah, of course. We're going to go to a small hill? Assuming we get snow, because it's been 60 degrees here oh, every boy. day. Here which... we go. God, yeah, oh, yeah. Did you mention your basement yet? No, not yet, but it's coming along. Okay, see? <laughs> and that's the end of the show. As soon as this is a hard and fast rule, as soon as John brings up the weather and his basement, while he's wearing a sweater... I wish I had like the effects where I could like create snow coming down on me right now. On the I'm video glad screen. you don't. I have I, things to do. 